Comic Book Savant, episode 474. Welcome back to the Comic Book Savant. I'm your host, James Harris. In this episode, we're going to be doing a movie talk review on the uh, Sony Pictures Entertainment uh, Bloodshot. This is based on a Valiant Comics character by the same name. This movie stars Vin Diesel. Uh, but before we get into the review, as always, I'd just like to give a shout out to my friends over at the Comics Podcast Network. If you like the content I create here, um, it's a great one-stop shop where you can literally find hundreds of different podcasts uh, on the genre of comics. Uh, so definitely, if you have a moment, stop by the Comic Podcast Network. You can find them again over at comicspodcast.com. Um, so getting back to the meat of this episode, which is the review of Bloodshot. Uh, this movie is directed by Dave Wilson. It's written by Jeff Wadlow and Eric uh, Heiser. And the breakdown is, is as follows. Ray Garrison, an elite soldier who was killed in battle, is brought back to life by an advanced technology that gives him the ability of superhuman strength and fast healing. With his new abilities, he goes after the man that, who killed his wife, or at, or at least who he believes killed his wife. He soon comes to learn that everything he learns can, can't be trusted. Uh, the true question is, can even he can he even be uh, excuse me, can he even trust himself? Now, this movie starring Vin Diesel. We also have Issa Gonzalez as um, we have. Well, excuse me. In the title role, we have Vin Diesel as Ray Garrison, a.k.a. Bloodshot. We have Issa Gonzalez as Kate are uh, also KT. We have Sam Hugan as Jimmy Dalton Tula Riley as Gina Garrison uh, Lamore. Morrison as Wilford Wiggins and Guy Pierce as Dr. Uh, Emil Harding. And this was a real interesting movie. It kind of got panned. We had a short release window because of, of course, everything with the, the pandemic and how it hit. The movie had just came out in theaters and I was actually on uh, I was on a trip up in Connecticut at the time this was released and I was going to go see it in theaters, um, but got caught up with family and didn't get a chance to see it. So once the pandemic really blew up, what happened while I was on that trip and on my way back home, actually, when things really got start getting really serious here, here in America, um, it was quickly, maybe a week after that was released on home video. So uh, then, it, you know, it came out. So even though I had a, I missed the chance to see it in theaters, they uh, had it for sale, like, I guess. Not not even two weeks after it was released in theaters for you to purchase. So since me and my wife had planned to go see the movie anyway, we decided just to go ahead and pick up the film um, and had a chance to actually uh, see it. And it w it's not reinventing the wheel. It's pretty much cliche and a standard fare we've seen with similar sci-fi movies. And the few people that had reviewed the movie when it came out in theaters, um, it didn't get the most favorable um reviews or ratings or rotten tomato score if you're into that kind of stuff um i could only base this review off of myself and my level of enjoyment in watching the movie i enjoyed it i wasn't mad at paying you know the 20 bucks to to purchase the movie um you know we pay a lot more uh, than that just when i normally go to you know my standard theater for you know our our movie date days or nights or whatever i pay you know way more than that for you know for me and my wife for us to go to the movies and you know snacks and all that so just paying twenty dollars out right on the movie can watch it at home um it's not a crazy bad deal for for that so i wasn't mad um you know what i say you know go out and buy this movie you must buy it and must watch it or anything like that no it's a movie you could definitely like wait on it's a fun kind of date night popcorn movie. Um, again, so it's pretty, you know, sci-fi kind of movie, but, you know, it's based on a comic book. It's done by a first time director, Dave Wilson. But Dave, one thing I, I do say about uh, Dave's direction of the movie, I feel like it was a good, not great first film for him. He's uh, he has a lot of he's worked in the um, video game industry, music videos. He has a lot of special effects. Um, um, he's worked in special effects. He's worked in uh, making trailers for movies and video games and worked on video games themselves and been a special effect artist. So the special effects, because this is kind of a smaller scale movie. This is not like uh, Rise of the Skywalker type budget of a movie. This had a smaller budget, um, but he did get 
he did ring like every cent out of that and the visuals are like stunning and I don't know if I mentioned it before, but we just upgraded the rest of our TVs. We had one TV in the house that was, we have three TVs in our home. Uh, we have one, we upgraded the one in the living room or, you know, kind of entertainment when people come over TV, main TV as um, to 4K. But we finally here in my office and also in our bedroom, I um, we finally went everything 4K. So I got a chance to watch this movie in 4K and like the visuals and the special effects like the visuals on this movie are ridiculous. I mean, just on the strength of the visuals, not even so much the story is worth the price of admission alone. Uh, so he really knowing having that background of being that uh, VFX specialist, and that was such a big part of his career. And then going into the camera, it's those shots are constructed so well and look so beautiful because of it, because he has an understanding of where the VFX are going to go, because that was his specialty. It's kind of like, um, with the directors of John Wick, those action scenes, because they were stuntmen for so long, then they've eased into directing. They understand how that action needs to be shot. And it was similar here when it was those setups for those of those VFX shots. You could see that it was someone that had an understanding of it and how those things work and how plausible. So they look the um, even with a smaller budget. It looks amazing. And I've seen, you know, movies, you know, one movie I, I looked at it and I was like, man, if he would have shot that movie, when I look at um, X-Men Dark Phoenix, which had a huge VFX budget, the the VFX in certain shots just look horrible. And it was like, with all that money that they had for a budget in comparison like to a movie like this, this movie looks, in certain shots, look thousand times better so that really stood out as a thing for me so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the next movie he might direct be it an action sci-fi anything that has some cool v effects he's gonna knock it out the park and like i said he's still getting his legs under him as a director but he has a great eye and this is wasn't a horrible movie i, I would say if anything that failed the movie it wasn't the actors it wasn't the director the script just wasn't the strongest in it you know that in itself but they made it work with what they had um i felt, felt like vin diesel did a great job as always he's very charismatic um far as a a movie star i think the one glaring you know issue because i've read i haven't read a ton of bloodshot but i have read you know uh, bits and pieces of bloodshot here and there i just didn't believe vin diesel as a soldier i'm just used to him more of a rogue uh you know i've been a fan of vin diesel since all the, all the way back with the original Pitch Black. Um, he comes off better as that that um, Riddick character, that Dominique Toretto character. He's more of a rogue roughneck. I just don't, uh, this this elite follow the rules kind of soldier. It's just, it was, it just kind of broke me in a way because I just don't picture him like that. And he just seemed kind of out of place in that role. After those initial you know, kind of opening scenes and stuff, seeing him like as a actual soldier in uniform. The rest of it is believable because he's very charismatic and you, you know, you do want to follow him and see him do well and see him go through the struggles like he goes through in the movie. And that works fine. It just, it kind of broke reality for me trying to see, you know, seeing him as a body letter soldiers, it just, you know, I, it just was unbelievable for me. So it kind of broke that immersion and fully, believing that with him um i also think some of the stronger points in the movie that really made the movie work for me um and made the the watch a really fun watch uh lamar Moore, uh, morris and Issa gonzalez they were huge surprises for me i've seen them both i know um i hope i'm pronouncing it correctly it's l-a-m-o-r-n-e i know i know his face i've always known his face he was um i used to watch new girl uh, on Fox and he was he was on that show for years I think he came in after the first season he replaced um was it Damon Wayans Jr. he replaced him uh, on the cast as a recurring character one of the, well, one of the main cast <clears throat> so I knew him from that I hadn't really seen him in movies so I was kind of shocked when I saw him in the movie and he just blew me away he was just really he was I guess the comic relief and he just had the right pitch and Tony had great chemistry with uh Vin as well as um Issa as well and their scenes were just really great and like I said I was really blown away I was like I wasn't expecting that um, they really did a good job <clears throat> rounding out the movie and just like I said made the viewing experience like kept it fun it didn't take itself uh, too seriously and it wasn't too heavy and and his com comedic 
uh, performance, her action performance and her sympathetic um, performance as a kind of emotional um emotional interest now i wouldn't say she was a love interest for vin's character main character but she was an emotional in, uh interest and that one kind of conscience of the film with her character so their two performances with his really really strong performance really gave that movie like i said gave it a really well-rounded feel and made it just like a made it fun to watch um also have to say about guy pierce i've loved guy pierce all the way back since uh memento um i've loved him as an actor it's kind of cliche at this point. Once you see him in the movie, you immediately know he's the movie's villain. Um, I'm going to say, you know, and it's nothing against him. I mean, you got to get his money. You got to get that check. Got to secure the bag, especially nowadays, you know. But like as soon as I saw him as the doctor in the movie, I was like, OK, he's, he's the bad guy. You know, like you just wait for the shoe to drop, even if, you know, because he always comes out and starts so nice. And then you just you know, you're always looking at him as like, yep, the shoe's going to drop. The other shoe's going to drop. Oh, there it is. He's the villain. And and it was pretty much that same thing here. If you've seen Iron Man three, this is this is, is basically the same performance, pretty much spot on. So if you've seen his performance, there is really predictable. It's pretty same note as um, that character in Iron Man three. Um, so it's pretty much the same. So unfortunately for me, it was a low point in the film because it was so predictable. It was like, I've seen him play this role just like this before. Been there, done that. So you knew where it was going and how it was going to turn out. So, you know, it was just pretty one note and just bland for me. Because again, I've seen him do this before. Exactly this before. Um, again, overall, I feel like this movie, um, plan, you know, like I said, I've really planned seeing it theaters didn't get a chance to see it in theaters at the price point of you know 1999 uh, you know on digital i don't know when the, the movie will come out physically on disc at this point um but you can get it now on you know uh, different video on demands like voodoo movies anywhere itunes um i think maybe the google play store i know um uh da, 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 da. Amazon as well. Most places you can go ahead and get it now to watch it. Uh, I think it might. I don't know if it's for rent. I don't know. Like I said, I just went ahead and bought it for 20 bucks. We just, you know, just was like, screw it. Buy it. Support the movie. I I don't regret the purchase of it. As far as the ratings that I normally give a movie, I gave the acting a 7 out of 10. I gave the casting an 8 out of 10. The direction, I felt like this was a solid movie for a first-time director. Gave that a 7 out of 10. And again, I really look forward to seeing what Dave Wilson will do going forward based off of this movie. Because I think he definitely has a future. Hopefully in the next film, he, you know, this movie was unfortunate. It just, like Onward for Disney and Pixar, it came out at a wrong time. And I hope that's not held against the film. Um, but I, I, you know, I would like to see a sequel to this. Um, don't up the budget. Keep the budget about the same. And under the right circumstances, if it comes out, you know, in a better climate that the movie will be, you know, it's not going to be a billion dollar movie by any means. But I feel like it could be a profitable franchise going forward because you have a likable uh cast in the film and you got a good director uh, behind it that understands the visual effects that are needed to make it work on a manageable budget and give you a good uh, return on investment they just got to get a better script behind a sequel if they at some point choose it choose to do one uh special effects i gave it eight out of ten uh story is a 6.5 out of 10 so my overall rating is a 7.5 out of 10 which is on my scale is a date night rental. That's kind of how I view this. This was like I said, we picked this up, you know, had the popcorn out over the weekend, you know, popped some popcorn, sat up, watched it, had a good time. We both thoroughly enjoyed, you know, enjoyed the movie, but admit it, you know, like, yeah, it was cool. We watched it at home, but we would have saw it in theaters, but it wouldn't have been, like I said, something I would recommend for everybody. Like, you got to rush out and get this or rush out and buy this movie now. But it's definitely a fun time if you just want a fun sci-fi action movie to watch when you got some downtime it's worth the pickup for sure um i know this is a little bit shorter episode don't have too much to say outside of this i just hope everybody's staying safe in the current situation it's you know this is we're living in unprecedented times right now with everything that's going on so i hope you're staying safe staying inside with your family 
um, and use this time to like catch up on comics and just spend time with your family. We live such busy and hectic lives that sometimes we, you know, forget about those small things and how much they can mean to us and to our families. So, you know, take that time to kind of reconnect and strengthen those bonds with your family. I know I've used a lot of my downtime for that. It's worked wonders for me, you know, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, um, and just making, you know, content and stuff for you guys and us talking on the um, Facebook group for some of so for you that are out there that listen to the podcast that ha- haven't checked out the Facebook group. Um, it's um, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the Savant Society. You can just put in a request to join the group because it's a private group, uh, but it is searchable. And once you request it, I see, uh, you know, I'll see your request. I approve it. I'll come and introduce you. Then, you know, you just post, you know, some information about yourself and your comics history or whatever. And off to the races, you can just join into all the, you know, cool comic conversation that we're having. We do recommendations. I throw out stuff, you know, to the group about uh, things they want to see on future episodes that get made in the future episodes. Um, So a bunch of stuff and we're having a good time. We're just talking comics and as a, you know, distraction with all the seriousness that's going on right now is a good distraction. And we're just connecting the one with one another and and getting to know each other better, which is always, you know, a great thing. Um, You know, as always, you can follow me on social media at Comic Book Savant on Instagram and Twitter. Um, Also, it's the merchandise store. Uh, the Teespring store It's links to everything on the website. So if you go to comicbooksavant.com, it's a, a link to store. We got cool merch there. Um, also, if you want to support the content, um, you can go over to the Patreon, which is uh, patreon.com forward slash comicbooksavant. Any support you can give, especially in this crazy time, is more than appreciated and needed. Um, for as little as a dollar a month, you get um, access to... Um, the comic books of my extra feed. So I do um, a whole nother podcast, a weekly podcast for Patreon supporters. So you can come in as a little as a dollar. I know things are tight for everybody right now, but if even everybody just jumps in at, for the Patreon at a dollar uh, a month, you get a whole nother podcast. So you can get even more cool content. And it's, um, I've been uh, doing that on Patreon for, I, I don't know, a couple years now. So it is a, t- a whole ton of episodes. So if you're bored and you want more comic book uh, content, it's a whole gaggle of more episodes uh, over there that you haven't heard yet, which is great content. So uh, that can keep you busy. And again, at the low point of $1 a month, you can get some more cool content and it helps support the show and the content that I create for you guys. So that would be greatly appreciated. But if you can't, I totally understand that because we are definitely in, you know, crazy times. And I think we're all adjusting and trying to figure it out, but it would be greatly appreciated if you can, if you can't, don't worry about it. The first and foremost, I want you to be safe and your family to be safe. But with all that being said, that's all I have for you guys for this episode. I'll be back next week with another episode of the Comic Book Survive podcast. As always, I'm your host, James Harris. Until then, you guys stay safe and stay inside and just cherish and connect with your family right now. It's super important. Uh, until next time, you guys stay safe and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.